Hello everybody and welcome to this week's video which is going to be based on the Vortism movement of 1914 um, which only lasted for a couple of years during the First World War. What I'm going to be doing is designing uh, an image using the photograph that I've put on at the beginning of this video which is based on Manchester buildings from a visit I went uh, when I went to Manchester and um, I'm going to break it down and I'm going to do it in the style of Dazzle Ships, which is a painting by Edward Wadsworth, if you want to look that up and you'll see where I'm coming from. So I'm going to break down elements in it and use decoration and pattern and anything I can see in it that might be useful. So I have here, first of all, I'm going to be showing you how to do roughs, how to figure it out before you actually start the final piece. Now, what I like about the photograph is the angle of the buildings that come up here. So I'm just going to basically put in um, very loosely this in an angle. And I think I'll keep that on the page. And I'm just playing with it. So maybe have that little roof there. I don't want to go into all the Victoriana. The Vortices was very much about moving away from uh, Victorian ideals i like this curve so that it looks a little bit like a rocket actually uh, not that they had rockets in uh, the uh war years but um i'll use that upward movement to get a bit of movement in because vorticism vorticism was all about movement and action using the modern urban surroundings I like that, but I'll abstract it out without the decoration. So that's my first shape, and I do like that. I like the chimneys going up. And I'm going a little bit cubist with this, so I don't know if I'm going to put too many curves in. That's actually going off there, which um, is okay. And going a line across there. I don't want to go into too much detail. So, but I do like the lines that go down there and the lines that go up there. I think that will make quite a dynamic, interesting composition. This area here, this building down here, actually angles a little bit away from this, which is quite nice. It adds a bit of interest. So I'll drop that angle there. And um, there's a staggered roof here or frontage to the building. So I'll just put that in like that very quickly and again using the lines that go off that way. I eventually in the final thing I might just think about straightening that because I think it it works better if all the lines go in the same direction. I might add a little bit of perspective going that way so all the lines go like that and going down to there so very loose and it will be loose when i come to um, do it on the final piece however the final piece will be um, more carefully drawn out and won't be sketchy it'll be very much um, linear and it's going to be black and white um, i know that edward wadsworth did a color one and a black and white one now the building on this side i think does dominate so what i might do is squash this and extend it out this way because i want quite a lot of this building on this side now this building goes off in that direction what i'm thinking of doing is having it going in that direction it does chop up the page somewhat but if i have the top of the building ending here i've got lines that are going to be going that way so the whole thing comes together in the middle and the whole thing about vorticism was it um, Wyndham Lewis said that the artist should sit in the middle of the vortex and the movement that is life going around. So the artist should sit in a still moment in the middle of it and depict all the movement and action and modern society going on around. I quite like these little points here. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get a lot of, um, even though they're buildings that sit there and don't move, I'm trying to get a lot of movement into it. So you do have a balcony here, which I do 
the like so maybe I'll make that a little feature balcony going off up there and I like the fact that there's little squares in there so if you have a look at the painting that I'm using um, the ship painting the dazzle ships you can see lots of pattern going on so the artist has taken small amounts of pattern and you extended it into the hole and that's what i'm going to be doing so then uh, these arches are really good so i'll take a line down there what i could do is just use these to get a distorted perspective and have the vanishing point down here and on this side i could have even do a perspective so the vanishing point is down here and as you can see I'm making a real mess of this rough and the idea is that this is your working out and your thinking so going to what would be a vanishing point down here this um, area here has a really wonderful balcony so I will be thinking about that but the arches work really well so I'm going to take those and put those in slowly getting bigger and they have a pattern on them so I'm going to actually put in that a little bit so that goes like not like that like that I like that so I'll keep that in likewise on this one I'm gonna have to make these a little bit more neat So I will do something with that. I'm going to, after this rough, I'm going to do a more finished rough and then I'm going to start on the final thing. So they also have um, halfway, they have decorative areas, but I'm a decorative bit of, um, I don't know, I think it's, it's stone, but I'm not going to have those, but I do like the pillars that I can see. So they're going to go in. All nice and linear so within the windows it's a shame that they're modern so all you've got is this bit of um, wood in the middle there is however um, a shadow and I might use that in there going on to the balcony I like the way it it comes forward so you've got that goes along there, then it comes forward, then angles, then goes down. And I might extend that to the end or stop it where it's supposed to stop. And that will be lined as well because that's got little pillars. And then you've got an eagle here or a gargoyle, which looks a bit like an eagle or some kind of creature. I'm quite inclined to put that in. Just there. And then you've got an arch here, which I'll abstract out completely. And another window here. So I think I'm quite happy with that. I might, interestingly enough, my working outlines, I might even keep those in. Think about my tonal values. So I'm going to go really heavy black on this one because this one is leaning into this one. So I want this one to come forward and this one to go back. So I'll just get up my picture. And I think dark in here and under here because that really leads your eye in. And the top will be dark. I do like these little gargoyle things here. I might put an arch in there. I might do this really dark, but I might make them a little bit more obvious coming out. Because that kind of leads your eye into here. And I think these are... Actually, there are pillars in the middle of these, which I didn't notice last time, so I'll put those in. And a lot of this will be dark within here. I might even have a little bit of window reflection.
and also going over here so I might um, put in a little bit of hatching he actually didn't hatch thinking on it so I'll have a quick look at my resource so I'm constantly looking at my resource photographs so I can uh, move away from them eventually to just focus on what I have in front of me he used um, Edward Wadsworth used greys and um, reds in his I could put a little bit of color in I'll have to think about that because I quite like it as it is um, black and white but what he did was he used um, finer lines and shapes in the the background and the boat that he did was had a lot of solid shapes so I'm going to make sure these are darker and more solid bigger shapes and the background has smaller shapes so this will definitely come forward with the really dark areas and it will be dark under here And possibly dark all around this gargoyle, which I do like. There is a curve going down here, so I could make this black, have a little line there. And a darker area all the way around. So that brings that forward, actually. And then I've got an arch down here, which leads the way to this line. I'm not sure if I will put these lines in. Um, maybe I'll have these lines going to there and maybe these lines will go across here. That's something I'll have to think about. It might just confuse the whole thing. So going on to the background picture here, um, I'm going to really think about the, the finer details here. So there are bricks within this. So I might put those in. I think I will probably leave this quite linear without sh shadows or dark areas. And I think that will send it backwards. Yeah, that's what I'll think about. Um, I'll just have smaller areas of dark, like for instance, the small windows that go on. Oh, there's one there as well. Yeah. Okay, so now I think I'm ready to start on the final piece. So um, here we go. Right, so to start, um, probably use this as my edge. And the building comes down here. The building on this side drops down. I'll put in my lines. I'm going to do them a little bit darker than I normally would because um, I don't know whether it will show in the video. So another line that goes down there. This is a very loose perspective. And then another line that runs down there. And going over to this side, uh, I think probably I might even, even use a ruler for this. So over here, I've got the, that bit of the building goes to about there. That's it. So I'll put the top in. And also I want to think about my perspective on this side as well. So that will go like that. And then another one maybe over there.
So the ruler I'm using is this one. I really like this um, because you can hold it and move it around. So much better than putting a ruler on and trying to keep taking it off all the time. So I'm going to start off with my basic shapes and I'm going to trust my rotaring pen. <laughs> and let's see now. Mm. So I'll start off with these curves and I've got to be really careful to keep them very neat. I don't want it to look sketchy. And I'm just putting the top on like that. Like that. Okay, and the next line goes down there. And I'm going to put these shapes in. So when you're drawing with a pen, you just want to be confident. And if your line goes awry as you're drawing, it's a good idea just to try and live with it a little bit. Rather than try and correct it. I mean, you can always use Tipex. So going around here, there are lines. Like that. And onto the next layer. I'm not inking anything in solidly yet because I'm going to get all my lines on because then I can judge what needs to be inked in and what I will leave. And then I've got my pillars. Now this is where I can start using my ruler. However, my ink is still wet. So I'll move down to here. And here. So I'm still looking at my um, source just to see where everything is. So I wonder how long this takes to dry. Oh, not long. So I'll go above there. Put another line in. Just for the fun of it. And then working my way down, I'll put these pillars in. It's my cat, I don't know if you can hear her. Hello, Nimue. She likes to come and say hello when I'm in the studio. But she usually shouts at me. Going along here like this. So pillars there and there. So the reason the um, vortices movement didn't really last too long is that after the First World War, People didn't really have a taste for the avant-garde. They went back to more traditional art. And I think also, um, although Wyndham Lewis didn't agree with this, a lot of people thought that it was um, very much associated with the futurist school of art, which I'm trying to remember if that was from Spain. Right, going down here, I've got a little balcony, so I'll use my ruler again. Bring those down to meet it. I'm trying to be very neat. And in the middle, you've got two pillars here and here. And there. Yeah. 
So Vorticism is based on Expressionism as well as Cubism. So it was about expressing yourself, which is interesting, actually, when you think about it, expression had always up to that time meant um, using paint in an expressive way, but the vorticists were quite contained and controlled, really, in their designs. But I think they were talking more about expression of line and expression of mood within their paintings and drawings. So a line across there. I'm just going to keep using my ruler all the way down. little bit of perspective in these I think it's going to be very distorted but mm, well never mind so going on to this here put a line down there and also I'll take the line below and the same on the other side Yeah, true to form, my rotoring is giving up a little bit. Okay, so I'll just put in these lines here. So narrow line there. And then you've got the window, so I'm going to put in these lines going up first. I'm a bit stuck at the bottom here. So if you have more time when you're doing this, you might want to be a little bit more correct than I am. with your sizings although I don't think it matters that much okay so try to draw a perfect circle like Raphael and going up here we do have um, curves So going on to these lines here, I don't want them to marry up particularly with these lines here because I think that would be uninteresting. So again over the top here, am I right with my perspective? Yes I am. So we have basically pillars that go down the middle of these windows. So I'm going to be freehand here and hope for the best. So for the windows, try and fit them in the middle. And 
and this is just a few lines I might put a little bit of something in here for interest sake Hmm. I'm going to put a little shape in here even though there isn't a shape and looking at the lines going down here I'm going to use the ruler so actually looking at the distortion here these should go at a different angle to what I've got constantly checking myself as I go I think there's a couple of pillars that run down either side of this, so I can put those in. I'm just adding a few little bits of made up decoration so the window in the middle here I need a ruler for and then you've got the balcony so I'll try and keep in keeping with the angle here And then you've got these two little windows that are deep set in the wall. So looking at these, these arch, I don't think there's a problem with having a few little arches. And then a couple of lines in the middle there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a bit of speed drawing just to get this drawn out and then I'll talk about um, where I'm going to put all my toner values. I already can see that my windows here are at a completely different angle to the windows here. Never mind, <laughs> it might not be noticeable.
So as you can see, it's all drawn out now and I did have trouble with my rotary ring but I tried the other one but it was just too thin and also the ink wasn't as strong so I ended up back on my rotary ring after putting a new cartridge in it. So now I've got to look at my tonal values and obviously it's a bit of a jumble and um, I need to think about how to bring this forward and take this back. So this is going to be a lot more detailed so looking at it I'm going to put in lines like that and I'm going to fill them in now all the way along so these are quite dark um, they do have the door fr uh, window frames I'm just going to play with these and have them curving around so I'm distorting a bit and then I'm going to go in dark over here so really simplifying everything So now I've filled in the windows, I'm going to look at um, what else I can do with patterning and I probably think I, I will work on these a little bit at the top, the arches. Just darken these in I think. And then the windows inside are also dark. Last one. So I think actually I still like <coughs> the idea of these lines coming from here. So I'm going to put those in. Um, it will be perspective lines from the building. It might just confuse everything, but um, we shall see. And that one goes down there. And then we've got this one. Oops, excuse me, camera wobble again. I'm probably just ruining it, but never mind. It's all experimentation. Always do it again. 
I think my pen's going to run out again any minute. <laughs> Probably, um, if I was to do this again, I would simplify it a little bit. Yeah, I think my pen's out of ink again. So I'll just have to change the cartridge. Okay, more ink. It still doesn't look... <laughs> Like it's going to work. Don't know what's the matter with it. Maybe I just got a dud one because I know a lot of people really like these pens. And I can honestly say I've not had any joy with it at all. I'm going to take the lines right the way across. I think up here anyway. And I wonder if I could do it along here. Make this a little bit thicker. Yeah, unfortunately I had a bit of a problem there because I did it freehand. So this one doesn't really go anywhere apart from to the top of here. So I'll take that across there. Like that. Mm, don't know if that works. I think I should have thought about that a little bit earlier. Anyway, going back to filling in this area here with the dark. Um, these are going to be darker. And I think I'll angle the, the ends. Same with this one. Oh, this pen. <laughs> it could be because I'm drawing upright. And then I think... Down here, this is all going to be dark as well. So I don't know that this speaks of industry or engineering. But I think it does have some of the style of what they were doing with their design work. So Wyndham Lewis did do figurative work as well. So I'm just playing. I've gone away from my photograph and I'm working just on what I have here so I think um, possibly for here I'll just do lines if my pen allows me to Seems to be trying to dry out all the time, this pen. I actually prefer a dip pen um, because I find that you get a better mark. But because this was quite cubist, I decided to use um, a pen that doesn't give expression of line. Sorry, camera shake again. Going down to here, this is a window, so I'll just fill this in.
So I'm not going to get too fiddly, I don't think. I'll just reinforce lines that I think need reinforcing. And I think what I'll do with this is just, because this is a door, I'll just reinforce the shape there. And I think these pillars could be a little bit thicker. I did these with that other pen. You can see the difference in the line. I suppose what I'm trying to do is put in strong lines and angles and shapes. And this pen has given up the ghost again. And now nothing doing. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I'm sorely tempted to throw the thing in the bin. I find it really annoying when I've tried to use it to sketch to sketch with because um, when you're in the middle of a sketch and it just keeps giving out halfway through a line, it's so frustrating. So I think I'm going to make these squares in here. And thicken them up. So that designates the end of the building. And I think these can be dark as well. So I think this building is coming forward quite a bit compared with the other. And I want to keep that strength. I'm going to fill in here as well, I think. Material up to there as well, and then for this, I'm going to put it in dark as well with just lines. Well, no, actually, it's got some decorative elements, so I'm just going to put rectangles in. And make it dark so it stands out.
So going on to the background here into this building, I'm going to put in a few windows like that. I, I might keep this mostly just line, um, but it does need a little bit of dark, you know, a few darker areas. So maybe in the windows, I'm going to put in some shadow areas. Hmm, I'm not sure exactly what to do on this, but um, I'll just keep going. Do some brick on this, I think. And maybe um, it's really hard to decide because I don't want it to, I want this do to dominate. So I'll just put in window shadows. Come on, pen. I was so looking forward to using this pen when I got it. And uh, I was so disappointed with it. Area there. So I'm just going to put in a few more details on this, I think. Uh, oops, that went awry. Going on to here. And for this bit here, there does seem to be some kind of a plaque, but I'm going to put a few more lines in. It's interesting because my angles go completely all over the place on this. So actually the top looks like it's falling forward. Maybe it's the crumbling of the Victorian era. <laughs> Maybe that's what this, this is. The end of the Victorian decorative era. Going to minimalism. So I could just keep making um, lines within this, really. I'm just hoping this pen doesn't run out again. So similar kind of decoration, I think, to this, but um, just not so heavy. Oops. And I think because this is at the bottom, it might be worth filling it in a little bit. If I had the time and the patience, I would be using a ruler for everything. These are dark. And 
and down below here there were actually two windows but I'm going to just have the one dark in there so I'm just choosing where to put my darker areas and not having great big solid areas of dark I think I'll put another circle around here and fill that in so that's actually quite interesting because that kind of balances with this over here and that a little bit darker And let's have a look over here. There's something missing here. There's a little bit of um, balcony missing. So under here there are this pattern. And then I think there's a block there. And a window here. Oops, that went wonky. Yes, this is a wonky corner. <laughs> mm. And in here there is also a window. So there's a bit of a ruler, I think. Fill that in a little bit as well, I think. Oops, sorry, I keep knocking the um, camera because I have to have it so near. So I think I'm just about nearly done actually with this. I don't want to go too over the top on these buildings. I'll just solidify this central one a little bit. a few little interesting bits here so I'm ignoring my photograph now I'm just putting in whatever I feel like at the end of the day the photograph is not that important it's what's here that's important so I seem to have a gap here as well but I'd like to put something in I'll put a little bit of extra yeah I think the problem with this pen is it's because I'm upright rather than um, holding it 
sort of vertically and I think it, that's why the ink keeps stopping. So these are, I think, windows. And over here we have two more actually. I think if I have a line going along here of darker that will lead your eye in a little bit as well. And with this window, I'll take it up to the line like that. So I think it needs something here. I'll just carry on this, I think, across. There is a bit of an antenna on the top of this. I quite like that, so I'll put that in here. Should have used the ruler. And darker here. And maybe going in a little bit darker in here, because that takes your eye to this building. wondering whether to put in lines across here as well. Mm, I don't know if that works but anyway I've started so I'll finish. Mm, you can't really see that, <laughs> never mind. Anyway, I think I will call it a day on this. So I'm not entirely happy with it if I self-critique here. Um, I think maybe choosing the Victorian buildings was not the best idea. What I am happy with is the um, composition and the angles and the way it all seems to be moving and this building is collapsing into this building. And also, um, I'm happy that I brought this out and sent that backwards um yeah i think that will do for today so have a nice week and i will see you next week bye